بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الخلق والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز آل خليفة رئيس مجلس أمناء المستشفيات الحكومية أصحاب المعالي والسعادة أعضاء مجلس الأمناء الأفاضل سعادة الدكتور أحمد الأنصاري القائم بأعمال المدير التنفيذي للمستشفيات الحكومية الدكتورة رجاء اليوسف مدير مشروع التسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات زملائي وزميلاتي منتسبي مجمع السلمانية الطبي والمستشفيات الخارجية التابعة لها الحضور الكريم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته نجتمع اليوم هنا في أول لقاء تعريفي بتنظيم من فريق إدارة التغيير التابع لبرنامج صحتي وبدعم من المجلس الأعلى للصحة وشركة الاستشارية KPMG فخرو للتعريف على برنامج صحتي والتسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات الحكومية والذي يعد أحد المحاور المهمة في مشروع الضمان الصحي الوطني في مملكة البحرين لدوره البارز في تعزيز جودة الخدمات الصحية في المملكة سيداتي سادتي شهد القطاع الصحي بمملكة البحرين تحولات جذرية في ظل العهد الزاهر لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عهد البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه لما يوليه من اهتمام ورعاية مستمرة لتطوير القطاع الصحي وتقديم أفضل الخدمات للمواطنين والمقيمين في المملكة إذ عملت الحكومة الموقرة برئاسة صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رئيس الوزراء الموقر وصاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظهم الله على تسخير كافة الدعم والإمكانيات لتطوير هذا القطاع الحيوي والهام بمملكة البحرين ومنذ عام 2017 تواصلت الجهود من خلال إطلاق الخطة الوطنية للصحة 2016-2025 التي تشكل أحدى المبادرات الوطنية المهمة والمحطات البارزة في مسيرة المشروع الإصلاحي والتنموي لجلالة الملك المفدى إذ خطت الحكومة خطوات ثابتة وملموسة في طريق تنفيذ برنامج الضمان الصحي الوطني صحتي والذي يهدف إلى بناء نظام صحي متميز يرتكز على نظام الجودة والاختيار والاستدامة في تقديم الخدمات الصحية وها نحن اليوم هنا لحصد نتائج الجهود الجبارة التي قام بها المجلس الأعلى للصحة ووزارة الصحة وجميع الجهات المساندة لولادة هذا النظام الصحي وتفعيله على أرض الواقع وذلك بتعيين مجلس أمناء للمستشفيات الحكومية والعمل على تنفيذ مشروع التسيير الذاتي لمجمع السلمانية الطبي وثم المستشفيات الأخرى التابعة لها من أجل تطوير القطاع الصحي في في المملكه ومن اجل ان ينعم الجميع برعايه صحيه متميزه تضعنا دائما في مصاف افضل الانظمه والخدمات الصحيه في هذا العالم. اما الان اود ان الفت عنايه الحضور الكريم الى بعض الارشادات لنضمن لكم مشاركه مفيده. ان يلتزم الحضور بخاصيه بالخاصيه الصامته اثناء الندوه وذلك للتقليل من التشويش الصوتي. نشجعكم على المشاركة بالأسئلة والملاحظات من خلال خاصية الكتابة الإلكترونية في حال وجود صعوبة تقنية الرجاء الاتصال على الرقم 4888 والآن الكلمة إلى معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز الخليفة رئيس مجلس الأمناء فليتفضل مشكورا شكرا دكتور بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم أصحاب السعادة حضور كريم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم والحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على أشرف الأنبياء والمرسلين سيدنا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين تسمعوني واضح؟ واضح أوكي الأخوة والأخوات الأعزاء يسرني أن أرحب بكم في رحاب اللقاء التنسيقي الأول الذي ينظمه مجلس أمناء المستشفيات الحكومية مع منتسبي مجمع السلمانية الطبي والمستشفيات الخارجية 
والتي يأتي ضمن مبادرات المجلس لتعزيز التواصل وتكريس نهج الشفافية والشراكة مع الجميع وتعزيز بيئة العمل في القطاع الصحي وذلك تجسيدا وتفعيلا لما نص عليه المرسوم الملكي السامي رقم 44 لسنة 2019 بشأن تشكيل مجلسي أمناء المستشفيات الحكومية ومراكز الرعاية الصحية الأولية وفي هذا الخصوص أتشرف برفع أسماء آيات الشكر والتقدير إلى القيادة الرشيدة يحفظها الله على اهتمامها بتطوير القطاع الصحي وإحداث نقلة نوعية فيه تعود على المواطنين بمستويات خدمية أفضل في شتى المجالات وعلى الثقة التي أولتها مجلس الأمناء لإحداث التغييرات المنشودة في المستشفيات الحكومية كما نثمن في الوقت ذاته الدعم الكبير والمستمر من المجلس الأعلى للصحة برئاسة الفريق طبيب معالي الشيخ محمد بن عبد الله آل خليفة والفرق المساندة لما يقومون به من جهود كبيرة ومشكورة لإنجاح هذه المبادرة الوطنية الرائدة الأخوة والأخوات إن تشكيل مجلس أمناء المستشفيات الحكومية يأتي تطبيقا لما نص عليه قانون الضمان ومن أبرز مهامه الإشراف على تنفيذ مشروع التسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات الحكومية وفق رؤية ورسالة المستشفيات الحكومية التي أقرها مجلس الأمناء والتي هي من ضمن الخطة الاستراتيجية لمجمع السلمانية الطبي لتقديم خدمات طبية ورعاية صحية عالية الجودة وبتكلفة فعالة ومستدامة مع مراكز محددة للتميز في الرعاية الصحية الثالثة ترتكز على سلامة المريض وتحسين جودة الرعاية الصحية المقدمة له بشكل متواصل في شتى المجالات وفي كل من رحلة علاجه والذي يتماشى مع أهداف مشروع التسيير الذاتي من خلال تحسين جودة الخدمات الصحية المقدمة والتقليل من وقت الانتظار للحصول على الخدمات الصحية وتوفير حرية اختيار الأطباء والمستشفيات وتعزيز التدريب الطبي والصحي في كافة المجالات وتعزيز الشراكة ما بين القطاع العام والخاص كما سيتولى الرئيس التنفيذي للمستشفيات الحكومية والإدارة التنفيذية التابعة له الإدارة اليومية للمؤسسات المنضوية تحت المستشفيات الحكومية والمهام الموكلة إليهم من قبل مجلس الأمناء وذلك لضمان جودة الخدمة المقدمة والمتضمنة الموافقة على تعيين الطواقم وإبرام العقود بالإضافة إلى توفير المعدات اللازمة والتعامل مع مزودية التغطية التأمينية وتطوير وتحسين التعامل مع الحالات المرضية والحد من فترات الانتظار وإعداد التقارير السنوية عن أنشطة المؤسسة الصحية الحكومية وغيرها من المهام لذات العلاقة فضلا عن تطوير الهيكل التنظيمي للمستشفيات ومختلف إداراتها بما يتناسب مع المهام الموكلة له بإشراف ومتابعة من قبل مجلس الأمناء ومن المجلس الأعلى للصحة ولا يخفى عليكم أن برنامج التسيير الذاتي يمثل إحدى المبادرات الرائدة ضمن برنامج الضمان الصحي صحتي والذي يسعى إلى توفير منظومة صحية متكاملة ذات جودة عالية تتسم بالمرونة والاستدامة جاذبة للاستثمار وتكفل الحرية للجميع في اختيار مقدم الخدمة الصحية كما ويعنى البرنامج بتقديم خدمات صحية عادلة تمتاز بالتنافسية ضمن إطار يحمي حقوق كافة الأطراف ويحقق التغطية الصحية الشاملة وبهذا الإطار نثمن موافقة المجلس الأعلى للصحة الموقع على استراتيجية التسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات الحكومية والصحة الأولية والهادفة لتمكين المؤسسات الصحية من اتخاذ القرارات لإدارة شؤونها التشغيلية من قبل مجالس أمنائها وإداراتها المعينة حسب اللوائح المالية والإدارية بما يحقق الهدف المنشود في رفع مستوى الرعاية الصحية والاستدامة المالية والتنافسية والشفافية ومنح المزيد من الخيارات للمريض لاختيار جهة العلاج المناسبة له حضورنا الكريم لا شك أن مجمع السلمانية الطبية تبوأ مكانة متميزة 
حيث يعد المرفق الصحي الأكبر في مملكة البحرين وقائم على تاريخ عريق من النجاحات والتضحيات التي قدمها من تعاقب على إدارة المجمع ومن حسن الطالع أن, تتزم أن تتزامن هذه التحولات ومبادرات التطوير مع الاحتفال بالذكرى الستين لتأسيس هذا الصرح الطبي الشامخ الذي نعتز به جميعا والذي يقدم الرعاية الصحية الثانوية والثلاثية لكل أفراد المجتمع ويضم التخصصات الدقيقة المختلفة ويقدم الخدمات الصحية المتميزة لكافة المواطنين والمقيمين على أرض المملكة كما لا يفوتني في هذا الصدد أن أثمن الجهود الكبيرة والاستثنائية التي يقوم بها الفريق الوطني الطبي وكافة منتسبي القطاع الصحي منذ تفشي جائحة كورونا وأصبحت هذه الجهود المخلصة موضع تقدير كبير من لدن القيادة الرشيدة حفظ الله وشعب مملكة البحرين ومحل إعجاب المجتمع الدولي حضورنا الكريم لا يمكن تحقيق الأهداف التي نتطلع إليها جميعا إلا بتوفيق من الله سبحانه وتعالى أولا ومن ثم تضافر جهودكم جميعا كفريق واحد من أطباء وممرضين ومقدمي خدمة وإداريين التزامكم اهتمامكم إخلاصكم وعزمكم على تقديم الأفضل أنتم الأساس في إنجاح هذه المبادرة الوطنية الرائدة التي يستحقها الوطن بما تتيحه لنا من فرص كبيرة للتطوير والتحسين إن نحن أخلصنا في العمل وأحسننا الاختيار وإننا على ثقة بأن الجميع سيعمل يدا واحدة متكاتفين متعاونين من أجل إنجاح هذه المرحلة المهمة للرقي بمستوى الخدمات الصحية بما يعود بالخير والنفع على الجميع بإذن الله وتماشيا مع الإنجازات الكبيرة التي حققتها مملكتنا الغالية في شتى المجالات لا سيما في مجال التنمية البشرية المستدامة والتي ترتكز على في أهم مؤشراتها على تحقيق الرعاية الصحية المتميزة القائمة على الجودة والتنفسية والاستدامة سائلين سائلنا الله سبحانه وتعالى التوفيق والسداد في أداء المهام الموكلة لكل من مجلس الأمناء والرئيس التنفيذي والفرق المطوية تحت مظلته من خلال روح الفريق الواحد بين جميع منتسبي هذا الصرح الطبي العريق والتعاون الوثيق مع وزارة الصحة والهيئات, والهيئات الصحية والمؤسسات ذات العلاقة في المملكة في إطار من التكامل والتميز لبلوغ الأهداف المنشودة بإذن الله والسلام عليكم جميعا ورحمة الله وبركاته كل الشكر إلى معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز آل خليفة رئيس مجلس الأمناء والآن الكلمة إلى سعادة الدكتور أحمد الأنصاري القائم بأعمال المدير التنفيذي للمستشفيات الحكومية فليتفضل شكرا دكتور صباح بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز آل خليفة رئيس مجلس الأمناء الموقر أصحاب السعادة أعضاء مجلس الأمناء الأفاضل الزملاء والزميلات أسعد الله مساءكم جميعا بكل خير نرحب بكم اليوم هنا للحديث عن برنامج صحتي والتسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات الحكومية والذي يعد أحد المحاور الرئيسية في مشروع الضمان الصحي الوطني في مملكة البحرين كما يسعدني تشريف مجلس أمناء المستشفيات الحكومية وسعادة الأمين العام للمجلس الأعلى للصحة معنا اليوم والذي إن دل على شيء فإنما يدل على الدعم والمساندة اللا محدودين في تسيير المستشفيات الحكومية نحو مزيد من التطور في ظل العهد الزاهر لسيدي حضرة صاحب الجلالة الملك حمد بن عيسى آل خليفة عاهل البلاد المفدى حفظه الله ورعاه وسيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير خليفة بن سلمان آل خليفة رئيس الوزراء الموقر حفظه الله وسيدي صاحب السمو الملكي الأمير سلمان بن حمد آل خليفة ولي العهد نائب القائد الأعلى النائب الأول لرئيس مجلس الوزراء حفظه الله أما الآن فاسمحوا لي أن أستعرض معكم نبذة عن برنامج الضمان الصحي الوطني لمملكة البحرين Dear guests and colleagues I would like to take this opportunity to brief you today 
about the National Social Health Insurance Program, which is called Sahati. Sahati considered the backbone of Bahrain health sector transformation. Sahati program aims to improve the quality of services provided, secure greater freedom of choice of healthcare provider, sustain an autonomous healthcare sector. As I mentioned, Sahati is the backbone of the healthcare transformation. And within Sahati, there are several pillars, including the following. The autonomy pillar, which is for the primary and secondary care services. Restructuring for the Ministry of Health to assume it's a new role as regulator of the health services in the Kingdom of Bahrain. Hikmah, which is the Health Information Knowledge Management Agency, which is expected to combine information technology and business intelligence. In addition to that, Shifa, which is the Social Health Insurance Fund Authority, which is responsible for the funding the insurance for the citizens. The fifth pillar is concerned with the private providers and insurance companies providing coverage to expat. All these pillars are governed and regulated by the health insurance law. In the secondary care model, hospitals are governed by the board of trustees which oversees the functioning of hospitals through the board of directors headed by the CEO. The domains mainly affected by this transformation are two departments, the financial and the human resources. Financing of services will happen through the DRG system for the inpatient, and fee for services payment will, will occur for the emergency and the outpatient. HR is the second department, which will be governed by the hospital itself, and it will be under the direction of the board of the directors. But directors. Primary health care is undergoing for a similar transformation as well. The only difference here is the method of payment. The payment will be through the system called capitation system. The Ministry of Health, as we mentioned, is expected to strengthen its role as a regulator of services as well planning for. They will plan the social care services, such as rehabilitation, environmental health services, especially legisl legislation relevant to population health. Now, let me elaborate a little bit more about HICMA, which is HICMA pillar. HICMA is considered the information hub, and it will contain departments concerned with information, planning, quality, and health economics. HICMA is to collaborate in the future with the payers, and providers and contain information about all claims. It will have the health information system and a national electronic repository, NIMR, and it will consist from the Drug Utilization Review Services, the DUR, which is able to track any drug that enters to the country from the customs all the way to the patient receives it. Moving towards Shifa, which is the Social Health Insurance Fund. It is governed by its own executive board, administration and communication. Shifa will be governed by the Supreme Council of Health Policies and Regulations as well. Now we will move to talk about the benefit packages in the following slides. And as you can see, they are divided into three categories for Bahrainis, for residents and for visitors. For Bahrainis, there is the mandatory package funded by the government for all the citizens. It is insured by Shifa and patients receive care in government facilities. There is also an optional package for citizens who would like to have additional services, such as going to private facility. There will be a cost sharing premium paid by the citizens and the rest will be covered by Shifa. The third package is for Bahrainis who decide not to take the benefit of the governmental support for healthcare. It is insured by insurance companies and people can receive treatment in both governmental and private facilities. For residents, there are two packages. A resident mandatory package, which is paid by the employer with a premium that is paid to the private insurance company and Shifa. Resident can be treated in both the governmental and private facilities as well. 
However, the resident optional package includes a premium payment. It is insured by private insurance companies and patients receive care again, either from the governmental or private facilities. The last one is the visitor. There will be a mandatory package where the premium is paid part of the travel insurance. It is insured by Shifa and visitors receive care in governmental facilities. I would like to elaborate more on the mandatory benefit packages. The national mandatory package will include the following. As you can see, the primary care services, inpatient and outpatient secondary care services, emergency care, IVF treatment conditional, pharmaceuticals, medical test, treatment abroad if it is required. It excludes the cosmetic procedures, including dental cosmetic, optical, home care, alternative medicine, and private room usage. While the mandatory package for the resident will include the following. Primary care services, inpatient and outpatient secondary care services, emergency care will be included as well, infectious diseases, some pharmaceuticals, some medical tests, the following will be excluded. Cosmetic procedures, such as dental, cosmetic, optical, IVF, home care, alternative medicine, and private room usage. Finally, I hope you now have a better understanding and idea about Bahrain's health sector transformation through the Sahati project. I would like to thank you for being here today as part of this transformation journey. Thank you. كل الشكر إلى سعادة الدكتور أحمد الأنصاري القائم بأعمال المدير التنفيذي للمستشفيات الحكومية والآن الكلمة إلى الدكتورة رجاء اليوسف مدير مشروع التسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات فلتتفضل um, Good morning everybody So today I'll give you an overview of the uh, hospital autonomy and as uh, His Excellency Dr. Ahmed Al-Ansari just mentioned uh, that autonomy is one of the important pillars uh, under the Sahati uh, project, which is a nationwide uh, health uh, sector transformation project. So now, today, we have to ask ourselves, why are we going for uh, autonomy? Well, as you know, the current uh, human resource and finance systems uh, rather limit the efficiency with the preset central budget and inflexible human resource policies and limited incentives. And there is a certain degree of bureaucracy in decision-making process, which uh, uh, has uh, limited executive powers to the administra administrators and managers of uh, uh, hospitals. And there is a conflict of interest in uh, Ministry of Health roles. So the Ministry of Health is both a regulator of the service as well as provider of the service uh, at the current moment. What we are hoping to achieve is that we separate uh, the health uh, provision uh, service from the health regulation uh, authority with Ministry of Health becoming the regulator and uh, both uh, the governmental hospitals and primary care uh, become uh, providers of the service. So with that, uh, the benefits of autonomy then is uh, flexibility to guarantee quality of provided services, improving decision making process, increase revenues and efficiency, and boost competitiveness and cooperation with the private uh, sector. All right, so we all know that uh, there are a number of major challenges uh, that are uh, facing the healthcare sector, not only in Bahrain, but uh, of course also worldwide. Namely, that there is a change in demographic trends with increasing in life expectancy, increase in population, particularly the geriatric population, with a change in the lifestyle trends that uh, actually lead to increase in the prevalence of chronic non-communicable diseases, all that with uh, the high cost of uh, delivery of care uh, versus, as we all know, uh, uh, against limited financial resources. So um, all healthcare uh, providers, whether in Bahrain or elsewhere, um, they cannot actually continue with the status quo and we cannot afford not to do anything at all. So we have to change, we have to transform, we have to adapt to the new dynamics in the current day and age. 
So one of the best ways to enhance quality, improve patient safety, maximize efficiency that includes expenditure, increase flexibility, is to reform the hospitals from the current governmental style to a different style that is autonomous uh, governance system in which the hospitals are standalone and they govern themselves by themselves. So then how are we going to reform our hospitals? So reform starts with the uh, uh, reforming the management and the reporting mechanisms of hospitals. And one of the initial steps in doing that is to have the hospital report to uh, its own board of trustees. And luckily enough, uh, there is already, uh, the step is already done. And as you can see, uh, the board of trustees is already uh, appointment and we're appointed and we're uh, honored to have uh, the uh, president and the members of the board of trustees with us today in this webinar. Next step that we need to ask ourselves, okay, so now we're going for autonomy. What services will be included in autonomy in the first stage and what will happen in the subsequent stages? Uh, next, we have to explore all the services that we receive from the Ministry of Health today and decide how we're going to shift them from under the Ministry of Health to be under our hospital in order for us to be a standalone uh, autonomous uh, governance structure. And that also includes the services that we receive from the Ministry of Finance and the Civil Service Bureau. Next, uh, uh, we will share together uh, a number of improvement projects, the things that we have to do in order to prepare our hospitals uh, for autonomous governance. We have to increase the preparedness level to allow the hospitals to be able to embrace the new changes. So to start with the first questions, the, cent the uh, first question, the centers that will be included in the autonomy are uh, Salmania Medical Complex, Jidhafs Maternity Hospital, Abdurrahman Kano Dialysis Center um, in uh, Bsetin, Ibrahim Khalil Kano Community Center that's just across the road from Salmania, Sheikh Abdullah bin Khalid Dialysis Center that is not yet opened, but it will be opened in uh, Hnainia, and the Multiple Sclerosis Center uh, that is to be opened in Muharraq. So what you see here on this side are the psychiatry, geriatric, and long-stay services, these services will not be included in autonomy in the first stage, but it will be um, uh, included in later steps. And the reason are obvious because these services, they have inherent uh, complexity, socio-economic, uh, psychological uh, interplay of a number of uh, confounding factors for these patients. So it is better off to postpone this to a subsequent step. So now these are all the services that I was uh, discussing with you earlier that we receive passively, I should say, from the Ministry of Health. And the reason that these are housed in the Ministry of Health, because we never needed to move them here in Salmania and Salmania Group of Hospitals, because we are uh, part and parcel of the Ministry of Health as structure. So once we will be autonomized, we have to remove all these services and transition them slowly but surely from under the Ministry of Health to under the auspices and management of Salmania Group of Hospitals. So we need to move human resources, finance, engineering, maintenance, IT, medical equipment, DMM, general services, audit, training, planning, uh, legal services, public relations, health promotion, and so on. Let's uh, explore one example, which is finance. As you know, the Directorate of Finance uh, is um, uh, governing all uh, items and activities that is related to uh, monetary management, and they are uh, directly governed by the rules and regulation, obviously, of the government uh, through the Ministry of Finance. So if we were to move the Directorate of Finance and to uh, change the way that we uh, deal with our finances, we have to move the, the style of budgeting from a government style budgeting, which is a line item budget, which is rather inflexible and uh, uh, does not give you the authority to move uh, funds from one area to, the, to another area within the same budget, to a different type of budgeting system, which is global budget. And hopefully when we go for uh, autonomy, the administration and the executive board of uh, Salmania group of hospitals will be able 
uh, to move funds as they see fit. And of course, we all know that uh, uh, hospitals are dynamic institutions and uh, one needs to have the flexibility of moving funds, uh, rearranging uh, services uh, in order for the, to cater for the strategy of the hospital. So as you know, the uh, uh, global uh, budget then of the future will be an estimated budget as uh, Dr. Ahmed Al-Ansari has already mentioned, which is a function of the DRG for inpatients and fee for service for outpatients and accident and emergency. So this is just to show you that the Directorate of Finance provides a list of services. Most of them are common to the Ministry of Health, whether it is Salmania, primary care, uh, public health, but there are some other uh, specific functions to uh, our hospital. So in order for us to move the uh, uh, function of finance to be controlled by the administration and management of Salmania, we need to move all those functions under the umbrella of the management of uh, Salmania. So in order to do that, uh, and that is applicable, by the way, to all the domains that I discussed earlier, whether it's human resources, finance, engineering, and so on and so forth. So then, uh, how are we going to trans uh, transition to autonomy? As you see in this slide, the current Ministry of Health system is here, and we need to move to an autonomous trust, and we are now in a transition phase. In that transition phase, there's a whole lot of tasks uh, that need to be uh, addressed and tackled and completed in order for us to move into an autonomous uh, trust. So there are a number of key domains that we need to um, uh, act uh, on them one by one in an elaborate manner, which are the governance domain, human resource domain, finance domain, and uh, a number of operational services like IT, training, clinical services, and non-clinical services. And cutting across all those domains and cutting across all the layers of the institution is the change management and public relation uh, activity. And what we're doing today in, in this webinar is actually part of the change management uh, activities of the autonomy team in order to prepare the whole institution to move together as one body uh, into the uh, future of transformation and the future of autonomy. So what are we proposing? Well, as you can see, the current system is a system of financing that is uh, centralized with a centralized budgeting system where the budget is not correlated with the quality of service and the governance is uh, under Ministry of Health with a centralized uh, role of governance. What are we proposing? So what we're proposing is to have hospitals that are uh, governed by an executive board that reports to a board of trustees that reports to the Supreme Council of Health. And where will the financing come from? Well, the financing will come through claims, uh, uh, through the Shifa Fund, as Dr. Ahmed has already mentioned. It's a social health insurance fund uh, authority. And the Shifa Fund uh, has its own board of trustees, and it will also report to the Supreme uh, Council of Health. So to, to, uh, so to put it simply, the current structure is that the hospital is part of the Ministry of Health uh, today, and it's governed by the rules and regulation of the Civil Service Bureau and the uh, bylaws of the finances of the Ministry of Finance. And we are uh, moving uh, towards a system in which the hospital governs itself by itself uh, through a board of trustees that uh, reports directly to the Supreme Council of Health. So this is just to show you uh, a snapshot of all the autonomy related activities that we've been doing in the past uh, number of years. And in this uh, regard, I would like to thank the KPMG uh, consulting group, KPMG Fakhro, for the wonderful job that they've been doing with us. And we've been uh, working with them extremely closely in order to reach the uh, ultimate goal of uh, autonomy. Uh, and to uh, improve the services that are provided to our patients. So what we've been doing, uh, we did a si situational analysis of uh, the uh, current state of the hospital today, not only of the hospital itself, but the situational analysis and the landscape of the health uh, sector uh, throughout the Kingdom of Bahrain, uh, which means the public and private uh, service provision, 
uh, inpatient and outpatient, uh, all the specialized clinic uh, clinics uh, with um, uh, proportions, skill mix distribution, and also a SWOT analysis, strength, weakness, opportunities, and threats, in order for us to know exactly how to move uh, forward in the next step. So this activity uh, that was done by the autonomy team uh, with the KPMG uh, uh, consultancy group under the auspices of the Supreme Council of Health, and of course with the close supervision from the uh, Board of Trustees as well, that was completed and finalized uh, by uh, this quarter, uh, uh, end of third quarter of 2020. And in parallel to that, we were also working on the strategy and that is uh, completed and you cannot go and work on a strategy if you don't know what is your current situation. So this was dependent on the initial analysis. Uh, so now the strategy is completed, except for the fact that we've uh, put the human resources as a separate strategy. So it has a strategy of its own. Uh, it's only because that the human resource, as you all know, is the single most important uh, domain in any institution. So the asset of any institution is the human resources, you and I, the staff of the institution. So this work is still underway and hopefully we'll finish it by the first quarter of 2021. Now we're also working on a target operating model, which means what is the operating model of Salmania of the future? And when I say Salmania, I mean Salmania group of hospitals, Salmania and the other peripheral hospitals. So we are studying the as is model, what is the today model? And then we're studying the to be model. What, what do you want to be in the future and the road to reach there? And the target operating model, uh, it is still not completed. Hopefully it will be completed by towards the end of this year. And hopefully when we finish that, uh, we will see that um, we will know what not only what the organization chart is going to look like, but all the skill mix, the functions, the relationship between all the uh, uh, functions and units uh, with one another and how to uh, and the bylaws and how to operate uh, uh, the business of the hospital and so on. The uh, other step here, step number four, is the implementation plan. This is still in the beginning uh, and we are looking into an integrated care network in which our hospital and the uh, other uh, different stakeholders, other hospitals, other healthcare providers in the Kingdom of Bahrain, whether private or uh, public, what will be the uh, relationship? Uh, how will the collaboration look like? How can we integrate? How can we improve uh, and develop uh, centers of excellences within um, our institution and uh, balance it with other centers of excellences in other institutions in the same country? And how do we uh, collaborate beyond the country into the region and the world? So this is really work in progress and we're hoping uh, that we will finish by the end of uh, 2021. Uh, with that, uh, I conclude and thank you extremely very, very much and look forward to the questions and answers that uh, the section next. Thank you. Back to you, Dr. Subah. Uh, before you go to that, there is just one point that I would like to make. I think it's uh, important to point out that autonomy also gives us the ability to reutilize funds generated by the hospitals to be reinvested in upgrades, training, etc. And the ability to invest in our lands to increase income for better facilities. At the moment, we can't do that. Any income that you generate goes to the Ministry of Finance in the future. We hope that what we generate, we can use to better the facilities in the Salmani. I just thought that is an important point to make just to complete what you just said. Thank you very much. والآن تتفضل دكتورة رجاء اليوسف بالتنسيق للإجابة على أسئلتكم عن طريق ال... عن طريق خاصية الكتابة الإلكترونية. Um, ladies and gentlemen, I've been receiving a number of questions. Uh, some of them actually uh, came to me through the WhatsApp as well. But to start off, uh, Your Excellency uh, Sheikh Hisham, if I may start with you, there's a question here. 
What is the role of board of trustees? It seems people have never been exposed to a board of trustees before. As you know, you, we've been here in Salmania for 60 odd years. We are not used to this terminology even. So uh, what is the role of board of trustees? And thank you very much. Um, before I go into the role of, of uh, the board of trustees, I just want to make, uh, state something. Any change, any change will bring about some fear, some doubt, some um, some unknowns. Um, and uh, it is a process that we all have to go through. We have to go through a process of change in mindset and accepting what, uh, what the new form looks like because we will all be part and parcel of building that end result. Um, it is something that has a lot of benefits if we uh, know how to utilize it. Uh, and it's nothing new to what is there already. So what is the role of the Board of Trustees? <clears throat> the Board of Trustees will lay uh, about the rules and regulations in conjunction with the Supreme Council for Health and uh, basically oversee the uh, the operations of the Salmani and not the day-to-day -day operations. The Board of Trustees will not be involved in running the Salmani, that's the role of the Chief Executive. We are there to make sure that rules are there, that any um, battles, quote-unquote, outside the institution uh, the Board of Trustees will uh, will handle. And um, other than that, um, the, the concept of autonomy should actually mean that the Board of, uh, not the Board of Trustees, but the executive branch should be free to run the hospital as they see fit within the approved rules and regulations. We are there to monitor. So we are kind of the Ministry of, of Health, but in a nice way, I think. Thank you, Maal Sheikh. That uh, explains a lot. Um, there, there are a number of other uh, questions um, for uh, Dr. Uh, Ahmed Al Ansari. There's a question about uh, will the uh, uh, expected change uh, affect the competitiveness and uh, increase the competitiveness between the private and the public sector? How do you see the future? Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Raja. Uh, I, I think the healthcare sectors in Bahrain will, will, will change completely in the future. I think they, it, it, is, it is mainly will be depending how the organization will be able to compete with other organization in a nice way, how they are able to provide an exceptional healthcare services uh, or an exceptional health services uh, and at the same time, they have to count for the cost in that organization. They have to deal with the health care as a business model. They have to deal with the care from quality perspective, and they have to compete. Since all the patients, they will be under the insurance, every single patient is able to select any hospital, any physicians that they can go and visit. Unless if you are different than other hospitals, why this patient will come to you? Why this patient will take any chances to come to your hospital, to your physicians? So you have to be an exceptional. You have to provide services differently than other. And yes, you have to compete as well. But your competition will be, let's say it, a healthy competition between different organizations. And that will provide the healthcare services providers to work more on the quality provided to the patients. So yes, it will be a competition between the healthcare providers in the future. Thank you so much, uh, Dr. Ahmed. There's another question here relating to Shifa and uh, the budget. Uh, I'd like to answer it if I may, Dr. Ahmed. I, I could take this one. Yes. Yeah? Okay, yes. so... So I know that there is um, a bit of um, kind of uh, mystery around this uh, issue because we've never 
actually been uh, in a situation where uh, our budget is kind of uh, um, like dependent on uh, factors uh, that, and activities that happen throughout the year. We are used to having the budget uh, that we receive it almost passively from the Ministry of Finance. Sure enough, it is related to the amount of work that we've done in the last uh, year or last couple of years with an average, with an additional percentage. But in the future, you have to imagine that uh, every patient that walks the doors of Salmania will be walking and carrying their own budget on their shoulders. In other words, that if you admit a patient, for example, for cholecystectomy, and you discharge that patient, and the discharge summary says uh, uncomplicated uh, cholecyst laparoscopic cholecystectomy. That has a code, and that code is part of the DRG code, which Dr. Ahmed already alluded to, which is a diagnosis-related group. That code, if you uh, put that, uh, the software will uh, bring you up that code, and that code translates into a number of dinars, and uh, we claim that money from the Shifa Fund, and Shifa Fund will uh, give us that money against that one patient. So by the end of the year, if we have uh, uh, managed and treated uh, 2,000 patients, we will get the fund uh, claimed against those 2,000 uh, patients. So we go through uh, via the DRG system for inpatients, and uh, we will go uh, by the fee for services for outpatients and uh, accident and emergency. But we have to keep in mind that not all our activities are purely clinical. One, one might ask, okay, I'm doing teaching, uh, research, I have uh, ma some managerial tasks, uh, administrative uh, job, uh, quality infection control. The answer is all those uh, non-clinic, not immediately, non-clinical activities will be accounted for and there will be a factor that will be uh, kept into consideration. So by the end of the day, uh, hopefully if we're doing our, um, if we're managing our cases in the most efficient way possible, we will definitely get reimbursed for everything that we do. And as Dr. Ahmed mentioned, this actually promotes competitiveness and uh, raises the efficiency. Um, I'll give the example of the cholecystectomy again. So if you do a cholecystectomy and, and let's say the uh, length of stay is two days, we know uh, that Shifa will reimburse you for, let's say, just for the sake of discussion, 2,000 dinars for the two day stay and the uncomplicated laparoscopic cholecystectomy. If we are lazy as a hospital and we don't discharge our patient until day four, Sorry, the money will come out of the pocket of Salmania. However, if we are efficient and we manage to discharge our patient in one and a half days or one day, then we can pocket the difference. And as His Excellency Sheikh Hisham has said, if we generate revenue, we'll be able to keep it reinvested and so on. So uh, our relationship with Shifa uh, will be a direct relationship through the claim mechanism and uh, hopefully we will get uh, our budget uh, through that system. Um, so uh, there's another question that uh, I just received which is about uh, the salaries. Uh, people are worried whether they, their salaries will be affected or not. The answer is no. You will continue to receive your salary in the exact same way at the moment. We will continue with the uh, rules and regulation of the Civil uh, Service Bureau uh, until we reach a stage that we are ready to make some changes. And whenever we're ready to make the changes, the changes will only be to the better. In other words, if your um, uh, if your salary, let's say, is thousand dinar today, it will continue to be thousand dinar. But uh, we will add an additional uh, scheme, which we call pay for productivity scheme. We are going to tie it with certain key performance indicators and your productivity. So more, the more productive you are, the more points you're going to accumulate. And then the software and the algorithm will tell us by the end of the year that Dr. X, on top of his or her uh, salary, uh, they will get this kind of additional uh, uh, payment, which is part of recognition. So uh, your productivity as an individual is important, and 
your productivity as part of the team is important. I'll give you an example of uh, part of the team, which is the institution level. Say, for example, Ward uh, 53 this year has been extremely well in their infection control measures. So the whole team will be rewarded because we kept in the beginning of year uh, of the year as a, as hospital management infection control uh, under a certain level uh, infection rate as a key performance indicator. So if you and I reach the target as a team, we will all be rewarded, whether I'm the nurse there or the doctor or the cleaner or the staff or the clerk. We will all be rewarded by the pay for productivity scheme. So in other words, the, yes, the salaries will remain the same, but there's a huge chance, hopefully in the future for uh, expansion. Thank you very much. Um, Victoria, if we just don't go into a lot of details at this time, we just uh, put the, uh, the overall uh, point across, that would be great. Uh, details is for another time. Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, just allow me uh, a minute or so to check if there are any other. Um... Until you check, I just want to make a comment. Yes. There's going to be much change from where we are at the moment. Um, as long as we abide by the rules and regulations, the approved rules and regulations, that will be uh, what we are requiring, we as a board of trustees and the executives will follow up on any transgressions. If there are any transgressions, those will be stopped. If there are bad practices, those will be stopped. But um, what's there, what's written, what's approved, what, whether it's in the Civil Service Bureau or the, um, the rules and regulations uh, for admin and finance, that will be uh, approved or in the process of being approved, then whatever is there approved, we will require people to abide by it. And it's not something um, unsurmountable or something uh, tremendously different than what people are used to at the moment. So there's not a big change in that regard. Thank you so much, Your Excellency. Um, uh, just to say that I've been receiving a number of uh, comments and uh, remarks uh, by the way, this is only the first webinar, but we're planning to hold a deep dive uh, webinars, as His Excellency mentioned. We cannot go into the, all details today. We're going to organize a string of webinars. This is only the first of many, and hopefully all your comments, questions, remarks, uh, suggestions uh, are recorded and will be taken into consideration. In fact, your comments will be our guide to what subjects to tackle next and how to go about it. So um, um, I see there are many, many questions about IT, about uh, uh, the uh, system in general. I think uh, the best thing at this uh, time is uh, if you will allow me just to take note of all of them and group them into themes and categories and then decide uh, about the next webinar and how to deal with them. Dr. Ahmed, what do you think? Yes, I agree with you because some of the questions they might content expert, like when it comes toward the IT and etc. So I think we group them and in the second seminar, we can go in details to answer all these questions with the uh, content experts. Thank you very much, Dr. Ahmed. So with that, uh, if you'll allow me, I'd like just to Thank everybody that uh, helped uh, help to make this a reality. Thank you very much. This is a new experience for us to have this many people in an electronic platform. Uh, thank you very, very much, Rabab. Rabab is our coordinator. She did a wonderful job. Thank you very much uh, to the uh, change management uh, team uh, that uh, put this together. Uh, and uh, thank you, uh, Zahra Bader from the Supreme Council of Health. Thank you very much, uh, uh, Mr. George from uh, KPMG. And of course, I, I should have uh, started with the uh, Board of uh, Trustees. And thank you very much for being with us. And Dr. Ahmed Al-Ansari, thank you so much. Dr. Ahmed, uh, will you please um, uh, honor us with a concluding remark? Thank you. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you, Dr. Raja. 
ختاما لا يسعني الا ان اتقدم باسماء ايات الشكر والعرفان الى معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز الخليفه رئيس مجلس الامناء الموقر على مشاركته القيمه ودعمه المستمر والى اصحاب السعاده اعضاء مجلس الامناء الافاضل على مساندتهم الفاعله كما اشكر فريق التسيير الذاتي وفريق التغيير المؤسسي برئاسه الدكتور رجال يوسف والشكر موصول ايضا للاستاذه زهره بدر مديرة برنامج التغيير واستشارية التخطيط الاستراتيجي في المجلس الأعلى للصحة على جهودهم الحثيثة لإنجاح هذا اللقاء الميمون إننا اليوم إذ نتطلع للمستقبل نضع أيدينا بأيديكم لنبني الرؤية المستقبلية سويا حتى نصل إلى ما نصب إليه نظاما صحيا متكاملا يتسم بالفاعلية الاستدامة الجولة العالية والتنافسية أشكركم جميعاً من إداريين وطواقم طبية وتمريضية على مشاركتكم الفعالة اليوم وأدعوكم من هذه المنصة للاستمرار في المشاركة معنا بالفعاليات القادمة ودمتم بخير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته كل الشكر والتقدير إلى معالي الشيخ هشام بن عبد العزيز آل خليفة رئيس مجلس الأمناء الموقر وأصحاب المعالي والسعادة أعضاء مجلس الأمناء الأفاضل وسعادة الدكتور أحمد الأنصاري القائم بأعمال الرئيس التنفيذي للمستشفيات الحكومية وسعادة الدكتورة رجاء اليوسف مسؤول مشروع التسيير الذاتي للمستشفيات شكرا لكم على حضوركم الكريم وتقبلوا مني فائق الاحترام والتقدير والسلام عليكم ورحمة الله و بركاته